Picture this scenario. You've got your workstation, and in this case it's plainly obvious to those looking on that I've got a Windows 7 workstation here. You can of course tell that by our start menu. Now on this machine I've got a single hard disk, and you can see that hard disk right there. But there will be times when you're going to want to have another operating system installed, let's just say, for testing purposes. So what choices do we have? Well, we could buy a whole new machine, that's one choice. It's an expensive one though. We could buy a new hard drive and we could dual boot this operating system here, Windows 7, and the new one. Now we could repartition the existing hard drive that we've got and we could dual boot that way as well. Or I could now choose not to risk changing this hard drive at all and simply create a virtual hard disk file and then install the new operating system into that single file. So just when you thought that a virtual hard disk file or a VHD file was just for virtual machines created on virtual PC, virtual server or Hyper-V, we now have yet another use for them as a virtual hard disk for installing a new operating system into. So let's get started and let's see how we can do this. Now I've already gone ahead and I've put our Windows 2008 R2 DVD into my DVD drive here. So the first step we'll need to do is we'll need to reboot this machine and start it up using this Windows 2008 DVD. Now I'm sure you've all seen this screen hundreds of times before in your installations of other operating systems, Vista, Windows 7 and of course Windows 2008, all standard stuff so far. What I'm going to do is I'm going to accept these defaults here. I'm going to click Next and choose Install Now. We'll need to choose what version of Windows Server 2008 we want to install. The standard edition here is fine. I'll click Next. Now we'll need to accept the license terms and conditions. We'll click Next again. I'm going to go with a custom installation. And right here we've got a problem. Now I don't have any disks available to install this Windows 2008 operating system on. Now sure I could choose here my 100 plus gig disk, but if I wanted to choose this I'm going to overwrite my Windows 7 installation, definitely something that I do not want to do. So instead we'll want to create a new virtual hard disk to install Windows 2008 on. So to do that we'll need to use the disk part command from the command prompt. So we're going to hold down shift on our keyboard and hit F10 and that will bring up a command prompt. So we'll type in disk part and we'll hit enter and that'll allow us to enter the disk partition utility and then we'll type in list disk and we'll hit enter there and that's going to show us what drives we have installed on this system. So depending on how many drives you have inside your machine your output here might differ slightly to mine but you'll see at least one drive in here and in my case there's our single drive there. Of course this drive already has my Windows 7 installation on it. Now obviously since this is our only disk we we'll want to be sure that we're not overriding this partition with this installation of Windows 2008. That's definitely not a desirable outcome. Now I don't want to partition this drive either. That's not something that I really want to do because if I was prepared to partition my drive or to add a new one I may as well just perform a dual boot installation of Windows 2008, something that we've seen how to do in other videos, so we're definitely not going to do that here. So instead, we're going to create a virtual hard disk on our existing Windows 7 drive and then install Windows 2008 R2 onto that virtual hard disk and leave our existing setup untouched. So what we'll need to do here is to select our drive that we want to work with. In my case, of course, I've only got the one drive anyway, and that's been assigned the number 0. So to work with this disk, we'll need to type in select disk 0. Now once you hit enter, you'll see that that disk is now the selected one. And in your case, if you do have multiple disks, you obviously might need to substitute the number 0 for whatever number your disk happens to be assigned. Now if you ever want to see what disk you have selected by the way, we can type in list disk and this time you're going to see an asterisk over here on the left hand side next to the disk that you have selected. So there's an easy way of finding out what one you currently have. 
All right, now it's obviously important to know what disk you have selected because the last thing you want to do is to destroy a partition or format a disk only to find out that you hadn't selected the right one. So it's always a good idea to check to be sure. All right, well now that we've got our disk zero selected, which is obviously the correct disk, we'll want to see what volumes we have on that disk. So for that, we'll type in list volume and we'll hit enter. And the output here is telling me that I've actually got three disks. I've got a DVD drive here listed as my E drive. We've got our 100 meg system reserve volume, which is taking up drive C. And drive D is my actual big volume. So drive D is what I want here. So we'll need to select drive D, which as you can see over here on the left hand side is volume number two. So to do that, we'll type in select volume two. All right, now what we've done so far is basically just select the right drive that we want to create our virtual hard disk file on. So let's do that now. So the command for creating a virtual hard disk is create vdisk file. Then we'll need to enter in the path to the file name that we wish to create. So let's call this 2008r2.vhd. And finally, let's set the maximum size of this file to 20,480 megabytes, which is around 20 gigabytes. That should be fine for the purposes here. So we'll hit enter. And our command has obviously been successful because we're getting some notification here that our virtual hard disk is being created. Now, this will take just a moment to create this file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pause this video and we'll come back in just a moment once this is done. OK, well, now we can see that our command has been successful. We've got uh, full notification here that our virtual hard disk file was created. Now, like with our other commands, though, what we'll need to do before we can install anything into this virtual hard disk is go ahead and select it. But before we go ahead and start typing in select vdisk, if we just type in list vdisk and hit enter, you're going to see an asterisk over here on the left hand side next to the virtual disk that we just created. So in fact, it's already been selected. So the final step we'll need to do before we can install anything into this virtual hard disk is to attach it to our system. So to do that, we'll type in attach vdisk and we'll hit enter and we can see it's done. Rightio, so we can now go ahead and install Windows 2008 R2 in this case as we normally would. So let's just click back here to our installation and we'll click refresh and here we can see now we've got another drive, our 20 gig drive we just created. Now down the bottom here, when we do select our virtual hard disk, you'll see that it shows us that it's not available to install Windows on. Now if you click this message here, it simply tells us that Windows can't be installed to this disk because the computer's hardware might not support booting to it. Now that's not true. You can ignore that warning and it'll install just fine. So we'll select our virtual hard disk here. We'll click Next. And we'll let this installation kick in and do its thing. We'll pause the video. We'll come back shortly once the normal Windows setup is done. OK, we're back. Windows 2008 R2 has been installed. And as with any installation of Windows Server, we're prompted here to set up a password for this machine. So let's do that real quick. We'll enter in a password and we'll type it in again to confirm that we typed it correct. OK. A password's been changed, so we'll click OK. And then in a moment, we're going to be taken into the Windows desktop. So while this is all loading, let's just go and open up a copy of Windows Explorer. And on this machine here, you'll notice that we've got two hard disks installed. We've got our 20 gig hard disk here where this operating system has been installed. Plus we've got our Windows 7 disk. Now this machine though, isn't really using a real 20 gig hard disk. It's actually, of course, a 20 gig file that's stored on this Windows 7 partition. So if we open up the Windows 7 disk, you're going to see right here this file, the 2008 R2.vhd file, which is approximately 20 gig in size. 
So this entire Windows 2008 operating system that we're using right now is actually all being pulled from this file right here, our virtual hard disk file. Now what's even cooler is that essentially we've now got a dual boot system here. Even though we only have one single hard drive running Windows 7. We didn't need to repetition that drive, we didn't need to add a new drive, we just created a virtual hard disk file and then installed Windows 2008 R2 into that file. Now when we need to run Windows 2008 we can just boot into it. So since this operating system though is really all packed nicely into this VHD file we can even mount this file from inside our Windows 7 operating system. So to illustrate this, to make it a little easier to see, to visualize if you like, let's quickly drop down to our desktop for a moment. And let's say that we've got a file on our Windows 2008 desktop and we want to use that file inside our Windows 7 operating system. So let's just right click here and we'll go and create a new, let's say a bitmap image. I'm going to give it a name of Windows 2008 R2. And let's just right click and choose edit for this file here and we'll just paint something into this file so we can recognize it. Let's just paint 2008 R2. Uh, That'll do. And we'll click save. All right, so now what we've got is a unique file on this desktop. So now we'll see if we can boot into Windows 7 and access this file. So let's go and restart our machine. Now as expected, when we restart this machine, it's going to boot up into a boot menu like you see here, giving us the ability to launch either Windows 7 or Windows 2008 R2. So let's go and boot Windows 7 this time. Okay, so we're into our Windows 7 desktop, so let's go and fire up Windows Explorer. And we'll go to our computer and you can see here that I've only got one single drive which is logical because I only have one single physical drive on this machine. So if we open up this drive here you'll note there's our 2008 R2 VHD file which of course if I double click on it it's going to be inaccessible by this system. But since this file is a virtual hard disk file and this is the new magic file format that Microsoft loves so much we can now mount this as a new drive from within Windows 7. So to mount this file though, we'll go and right click on computer and we'll choose manage. And that's going to open up the computer management console. It'll do that in a moment, it's struggling. There it is. Uh, over here on the left we're going to choose disk management. Up the top here in the action menu, we've got two options here that relate to hard disks. We can create a VHD file and that allows us to create a blank hard disk which is useful when you need to have a second hard disk in your system. And a good example of that, by the way, is try running Windows Backup without a second hard disk in your system and see what it does. Well, it won't let you back up your system without one, really, so you could create a VHD file and then use Windows Backup to back up your system to that disk. It's a sneaky way to get around the limitations of the backup program. Anyway, we're after the second option here to attach a VHD file, so we'll choose Attach VHD. Then we'll browse to our C drive and we'll select our 2008 R2 VHD file and we'll click open and then we'll click OK. All right, here we can see that our drive was mounted successfully and Windows has loaded the drivers that it needs to access that disk and it's also assigned it the letter E. So if we go and click back to Windows Explorer, and in fact, down here in the, the taskbar here, you'll see that the disk has auto-played. So if we open that up there, you'll instantly recognize that this is obviously a drive that already has Windows installed in it by this folder structure here. But let's dig down into our Users folder, then the Administrator folder, and we'll just click Continue here to get into this folder. We'll go to our Desktop, and right here is the file that we created inside Windows 2008 R2. So obviously we're able to take nothing more than a single file, install a whole operating system into it and then mount that file as a new drive and basically do what we like with it.
So as you've seen, it's been pretty easy to create a whole new operating system using our virtual hard disk file. But what if we want to delete this file and remove it from our boot menu? Well, that's pretty easy too. To do that, we'll just close this for now. We'll go back here to our computer management console. And in the bottom section down here, we're going to right click on our E drive, our virtual hard disk file here. And down the bottom here, we're going to choose to detach the VHD file. Now when we select this, we will be asked to confirm our choice here, but we've also got the option here of deleting the VHD file off the disk as well if we like. So if you want to delete the file too, check this box and click OK. If not, unselect that, just click OK, and then you can go ahead and delete the file just as you would any other regular file. So now that this virtual hard disk has been detached from our system, you can see here it's gone. There is no longer an E drive here. We'd probably also want to edit the boot menu so that Windows 2008 R2 doesn't appear as a bootable option. So to do that, we'll want to open up a command prompt, and this command prompt will need to be opened up in administrator mode though. So we'll click Start, and we'll type in CMD, and we'll hold down the Control and Shift keys on our keyboard, and we're going to hit Enter. We'll click Yes here to continue, and we can see up the top that's opened up a command prompt in the administrator mode. Now the command that we are looking for here is BCD edit, so we'll type that in and hit enter. And if we scroll up throughout this output here, what we're looking for is the entry that points to our 2008 R2.VHD file. So we're going to want to remove this. So the command for removing this entry is going to be BCD edit slash delete, followed by the identifier of the entry we want to delete. So let's just scroll back up a little bit here. And in my case, the identifier is listed here under, of course, identifier, and it's listed as default. So if we scroll back down, the command we'll need to type in is bcd edit slash delete, and then default. So once we've done that, we'll hit enter. All right, it's gone. So if we now run bcd edit again, in fact, let's just clear the screen to make it a little bit easier to identify. And if we scroll up, we should now see that we no longer have any entries for the Windows 2008 R2 virtual hard disk. So now if we reboot this machine, we're going to have no reference to Windows 2008. It's just going to boot straight into Windows 7. So in this video, we've discussed another use for virtual hard disks or VHD files. We can use them to install operating systems into without the need for special virtualization software and without the need for repartitioning or adding new physical drives. Using this method, you can easily create new machines without affecting your existing Windows setup, something that we'd all probably enjoy. Now when you're done with the operating system, removing all traces of it is as simple as deleting one file and removing the boot entry and you're done. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and would like to thank you for watching.